that talk, that talk in reality You have not seen me in action You think the come up comes overnight You ain't behind the scenes Trust me, these scenes don't just happen I moved to Queens, New York at a very young age I was always a person who loved looking to the street to see what people were wearing I was always very much influenced by what the kids were wearing on Jamaica Avenue Jamaica Avenue is a street that we all went to after high school to get the latest trend. I had a really good friend by the name of Michael Kenneth Williams who uh, said to me one day, why don't I style him? And I was like, what is that? He later on uh, introduced me to uh, one of my mentors, June Ambrose. We shot for hours and top of hours and top of hours. I knew then and there at the time that fashion styling is what I wanted to do. You know, later on as the years went by, uh, Jive Records, who had some of the most talented artists, started hiring her for a lot of music video jobs, and I was her first assistant. As the years went by, Hype Williams called Missy Elliott. Me, I'm super fly, super duper fly, super duper fly. He had a vision of putting her in a Michelin man suit, and we're like, what's that? So we did our research and found out it was an inflated suit. Me, I'm super fly. For the record, it's not trash bag, it's a patent leather fabric. So we took that fabric and made Missy suit. Puffy and Mace, we covered a yellow fabric with plastic. And a few seasons later, Dolce & Gabbana had all these amazing dresses covering beautiful fabric with plastic. And we were like, wait a minute, we did that before. High fashion has always been influenced by the street. When I traveled to places like Japan and London, you see the influence of black American streetwear. You know, I'm constantly watching and learning because the inception of streetwear really does start in the street. So it's saying, so it's saying. Liquor stores and crack fiends, South Jamaica Queen. You have to have that insight. And that has allowed me, as a fashion stylist and a creative director, to always have my pulse on what's new and what's hot as far as color is concerned, trend concerned, and where the forecast is going season after season. And that's why, 25 years later, that I'm still able to create. They ain't never seen nothing like this before. Lit the room when I came through the front door. First time I met Eric, uh, it was for casting. He was helping us cast and style the first Call Can I fashion show in Brooklyn. And it was interesting because Eric had such a vision for the show and such a vision of what models to use that he was actually the first one to introduce us to Tyson Beckford before Ralph Lauren. I think diplomacy will be his next step into understanding his talent, his skill set, and how he sees things and sees the future in fashion. And I think diplomacy is on its way to be very successful because of Eric. His talent speaks for itself. I was blown away by Eric's sensibility, his style, his ability to connect the dots across trends, both high and low. Eric, to me, is that guy. That guy, you when you think about that fashion credibility, that iconic status, and then on top of it all, just a really great guy. Seeing how designs go global inspired me to create and design Diplomacy, a thought wear brand born from the roots of streetwear. There is no other brand that can trace their lineage back to one of the original architects of streetwear like Diplomacy. The aesthetic of many of the streetwear designers of today comes from them being a student of streetwear rather than being born from the culture. Eric was born from it. His, his journey has taken him to many different places. You know, to create streetwear, to create a style that speaks to somebody in New York City, speaks to somebody in London, speaks to somebody in Tokyo, speaks to somebody in Stockholm. When you can transcend language with style, that's diplomacy. Three, three, three.